Welcome to discuss the second scenario for today's uh, RCC discussion. Thank you for the trainee who has agreed to record the session so that it will be a good revision tool for the other trainees going for the exam. You got a 60 year old gentleman presented to the clinic uh, with uh, history of visible hematuria. Your colleague has evaluated him, his flexible stroscopy was normal. As a part of visible hematuria evaluation, they did uh, CT urogram which showed lesion in the kidney. How are you going to evaluate him? Um, so I would um, see, him, see him back in clinic. I would imagine he's already had a history taken, but I just want to clarify a few points of it. Um, so things I, I really want to know about uh, are any local symptoms. Has he got any loin pain? Um, I'd want to know about his um, previous urological history, any surgery. Um, I'd want to know about his medical status and performance status, um, any risk factors for CKD, um, any risk factors for um, renal cell carcinoma or, or upper tract TCC, uh, particularly things like family history. Um, and um, yeah, and, and I'd, I'd examine him again, look, looking for scars, looking for systemic um, features, uh, leg swelling, um, and assessing for a palpable mass. Um, and I then, uh, I want to have reviewed his imaging in the MDT. Um, and um, then I'd, I'd discuss uh, things with him based on, based on the findings. Okay, I'm just going to share the screen so that you can see the pictures, okay? Okay. Are you able to see the pictures now? I can, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to slowly take it down. So that's the upper cut you are seeing at the level of the liver. Uh -huh. If you want to stop me, let me know. So below the pelvis is absolutely clear. You are interested in the bladder because of hematuria, but the bladder is clear. So I will take you through the kidneys again if you want. Yeah. Okay, so explain the findings. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at a um, contrast enhanced um, CT in the axial section. Um, I can see that on the right side, um, there's a heterogeneous, uh, very endophytic mass um, involving the collecting system um, of the right kidney, um, possible some uh, areas of, of necrosis in the center and areas of low attenuation. Um, I could only see one artery in one vein. I couldn't see any obvious lymphadenopathy. Um, the other contralateral kidney looks normal. Um, and yeah, I couldn't see any signs of metastases in the liver in the sections you showed me. Okay, so what is your diagnosis? How will you take it further? So this, this could either be a, a large endophytic um, renal cell carcinoma or, or it could potentially even be a um, upper tract urethelial carcinoma. Good. So I need to mention that the CT scans were taken from a website by name Radiopedia. It's a wonderful website which has got thousands of images, not only of urology, even non-urological disease. When you are discussing these kind of pictures, sometimes you need to think out of the box to see is there anything we are missing. You are quite correct in saying about the opposite kidney, lymph nodes, vessels, etc. But if you look at it, there is some contrast in the bowel. It's okay, it is not going to impact your marks, but if you're able to have a little bit of open mind to find any non-neurological lesions also, that will really clinch a good um, diagnosis and also keeps you like a wholesomeness in the presentation. But it will not affect your mark, but it's better to look into that also, okay? Okay. Okay, so what will you advise for this gentleman? Um, I'd ideally want to have a urographic phase. Um, I'd also ask for a year in the cytology and I'd discuss um, the results of all these at the MDT. Um, and I'm not sure if this is included in this scan, but I want to get a CT chest for full staging. Um, and um, yeah, I'd need to review things with a uroradiologist to, to discuss about whether this is a, a RCC or a upper urethelial cancer and we take things from there. His CT chest is normal. As you said, there is no sense of any lymph nodes anywhere. 
when you discussed in the euro radiology you can mention it as a mdt meeting so that that makes more sense and uh, in the mdt meeting the radiologist was not able to come to a conclusion and he also feels because of two medial presence it could be tcc also they can't rule out tcc okay um i think it's reasonable to, to send up for cytology um but yeah i when i see this patient back in clinic um with our cns i would uh, explain the findings um of the um of our mdt and i'll explain the options um in this case there are probably broadly speaking two options um i think one option would be for further diagnostics that would be in the form of a uh, right urethral venoscopy to assess the uh, collecting system endoscopically and that'll give us more information as to whether there's a tcc there or not um i think the other option would be to proceed to radical surgery um and to err on the side of caution and presume that this is a tcc just to do a nephroureterectomy rather than a nephrectomy um i think a cytology would be helpful to kind of you know, if if we're going down that route to to um uh sway us one way or the other um i think my preference in this situation in such a young fit gentleman in such a large or reasonably large tumor probably would be to proceed to radical treatment um but um yeah those are the options i would discuss okay so that's a nice way to take it forward it's better to take the options open rather than committing to one option because if you commit to a ureteroscopy the examiner may say it just involves another ga you are getting up with lot of difficulty the vision is poor maybe ongoing hematuria is still present still the lesion is not good enough in your visual appearance to differentiate as rcc or tcc then you may end up taking some biopsies which can bleed which can make the patient's life quite horrible before the definitive surgery but it's nice to bring the option of ureteroscopy available nice to rely on the cytology and uh, for this patient your colleague previously seen the patient in the visible hematuria clinic and the cytology sent was normal it's acellular the other option i agree with you that uh, assume that this could be a tcc the maximum difference is radical nephrectomy versus radical nephroureterectomy there is no real strong evidence to say that radical nephroureterectomy has a increased chance of any morbidity the only point is you should be careful in handling the lower ureter because that's where if at all if there is any morbidity in addition to radical nephrectomy if at all if it happens it happens there so let us assume that you wish to go ahead with a radical nephroureterectomy for this patient how will you prepare this patient um so i'd uh ensure that you know he's had the adequate preoperative checks and preoperative blood tests um and i would uh, of course discuss um the consent process in clinic along with the cns um with the aid of bowel information leaflets uh the points i'd wish to highlight uh, would be the fact that we're we're doing this operation because of the potential chance of there being a cancer there is always a chance of there being a benign histology or if even being a um rcc which didn't require removal of the ureter but we're erring on the side of caution in this situation um i'd explain that the operation can be done in a number of ways um it can be done open laparoscopically or robotically in our institution this would be done uh, with a laparoscopic hand assisted approach um so i'd explain what that involves it's minimally invasive i'd explain that um you would expect stay in hospital for one or maybe two nights at the most um presuming everything goes well um and he'd be left with a few small scars um with one uh scar probably about 5 or 6 cm um close to the midline uh, for removal of the specimen and insertion of the hand um i'll explain the complications um immediate or visceral injury um uh, vascular or uh, or severe bleeding um and um conversion to open surgery um early complications in terms of um ongoing urinary leak um in terms of infection of the wound or deeper structures or of the chest um uh, and um ileus um and then uh late complications uh, in terms of uh, recurrent hernias um and adhesional uh, bowel obstruction um and um we then yeah if, if he's happy then then proceed to list him for the operation okay so what are the options available for you to tackle the lower ureter in an ureterectomy um 
So broadly speaking, there are two main or possibly three main options. Um, so one option that I'm most familiar with is the, the sort of rip and pluck method where we start off with a cystoscopy and use a Collins knife to circumscribe the ureter down to fat. Um, and then from the top end, once the ureter is fully mobilized, um, you can sort of pluck pluck the bottom end off. So you've got a, a cuff of bladder. Um, the, the other sort of, I suppose, gold standard now would be to do the bottom end um, either in an open approach, um, so you can do a, a Gibson's incision um, and then just uh, it was extra, extra peritoneal and then just open the bladder um, and then formally close it. Um, and then nowadays, more and more people are doing things robotically. So again, you can, you can open the bladder um, extra vasically and then formally close it. Um, I guess the advantage of that would be being able to give early mitomycin postoperatively if you've got a nice watertight closure. What do you mean by Gibson's incision? Um, so that's a, uh, a lower quadrant incision. Um, so it's sort of parallel to the inguinal ligament, about three centimeters above the inguinal ligament. Um, and it's similar to an appendix incision. So you, you sort of open the external oblique um, and then you can just split the muscle um, in the three layers of muscle um, to get down uh, into, your, into the abdomen. You mentioned about mitomycin. Uh, what is the importance of mitomycin in upper tract TCC? Um, so, so we know that it reduces recurrence rates. There was the, the Odmet C trial, um, I think it was 2011, um, done by Tim O'Brien's team. Um, and it, it reduces the, the risk of recurrence um, from 70% to I think 45% um, if it's given within about 10 days. So uh, when, blood, blood recurrence I'm talking about, sorry. Okay, so when will you give the mitomycin for this patient? Um, if we do a rip and pluck method, we obviously can't do it immediately. Um, so an option would be to leave the catheter in for 10 days and do a cystogram to ensure there's no leak and give it prior to catheter removal. But if we have formally closed the bladder, you could give it immediately postoperatively. Okay. So how will you tackle this patient uh, postoperatively? He had a rip and pluck method of uh, right nephroyurectomy. What is your post-op plan? So normally we'd leave a drain in. Um, so I'd wait until the drain is dry before taking it out. We'd monitor his blood. Um, presuming everything is well, once the drain is out and he's mobile, um, he'd go home with the catheter. Um, and then we'd aim to remove it in about 10 days' time. Um, admittedly, in our institution, I don't think we use mitomycin that often. Um, so we don't do a cystogram routinely. And then we take the um, catheter out. Um, and then... Um, we would, uh, of course, review the results of the histology in our MDT to plan his further follow-up um, and potential adjuvant treatment if needed. Okay, his histology reported as 4.5 cm into 5 cm high-grade G3 TCC of the right renal pelvis. No other lymph nodes noted. You have done some perinephric lymph nodes, but none of the lymph nodes were involved. The, there is no positive surgical margin. What will you do? Is there any uh, T staging? Is there any parenchymal invasion? It's a uh, 4.5 centimeter lesion. There is uh, some parenchymal invasion, yes. Okay, fine. So, um, yeah, so this puts into the sort of invasive category. So, um, he'd be potentially a candidate for adjuvant chemotherapy, um, but we'd want to obviously measure his renal function postoperatively to make sure he's going to be a candidate for that. Um, but I understand he's quite fit from a performance status point of view. Um, so, yeah, we discussed the results in the MDT along with our, our medical and clinical oncologists. Um, and then uh, we would see him back in clinic with the CNS and we'd discuss that option with him. And if he wants to entertain that option, we'd refer him on to the medical oncologist to discuss chemotherapy. Okay. What kind of chemotherapy you have in your mind? Um, so it's platin based chemotherapy if his GFR is adequate for it. What is the GFR expected for fitness? 60 and above. If the patient's EGFR, say, unfortunately falls to 45 because of being a solitary kidney, what other options you have? Um, we could measure his PD-1 status. Um, if he's PD-1 negative, then the other option would be carboplatin. Um, carboplatin and gemcitabine, I think. Um, if his PD-1 status is positive, um, then the, there's the option of giving immune checkpoint inhibitors. What do you mean by immune checkpoint inhibitors? Um, so PPD-1 inhibitors um, such as pembrolizumab um, are an option. Okay. What is the mechanism by which they act, um, immune modulators, how they act? 
Um, so the essential mechanism is, is PD-1 uh, is a um, receptor on the T cells which has an, an inhibitory function. Um, and so we can give monoclonal antibodies to block PD-1 um, to allow T cells to exhibit their anti-tumor response. Um, so it, they exert an immunological effect on the tumor. Okay. So how will you arrange further follow-up for him? His um, tumor is uh, PD-1 positive, so the immune checkpoint inhibitors were arranged by the oncologist. So what is your role? Um, so I, in, in liaison with the oncologist, we, we want to organize follow-up uh, imaging and also what we do follow-up um, endoscopic evaluation. Uh, so conventionally in, in, in a high-risk patient like this, we would do uh, a cystoscopy at three months along with the cytology. Um, we'd also do a CT chest um, along with the CT urogram uh, at about six months. Um, and then we'd probably follow uh, EAU guidance and, and just continue on with surveillance after that. Um, so that, that would involve the first couple of years, three monthly cystoscopies and cytologies, um, another CT at six months, and then I think it goes on to annual uh, after a couple of years. Okay, that's good. That's the end of the discussion for this scenario. Do you have any questions before we finish this? Uh, no, no. Okay, good. Let's finish this one and we'll do one more.